In this quick start tutorial video for V-Ray for SketchUp, we will discuss how to set up exterior lighting for a daylight scenario. I'll be working in SketchUp Pro 2019 for this tutorial series, and for this lesson, I'm using the lesson file called 021 Exterior Lighting Day Start. You can download this tutorial file from the link in the video description, where you'll find it located in the Assets folder. To begin, you'll see on the right here that I have the Asset Editor already open, and I'm looking at the render settings. Before I start changing the lighting, I'm first going to enable the Material Override toggle, which if I drop down the rollout, you'll see is set to display a default generic gray color. This way, I can focus on the light's contribution to my project without being distracted by the materials. Now, let's also toggle on the Interactive Render switch, and then go ahead and start a render to see what our image looks like so far. Okay, you'll see we have a nice preview of our lighting here, thanks to the Material Override. Now let's take a look at how we can tweak the lighting and improve it. If we open up the Lights tab, you'll see we have a sunlight, which is added by default to any V-Ray for SketchUp file. If I select the sun and open the right-hand flyout menu, you will see the settings for the sun system. Arguably the most important parameters here are the intensity multiplier for the sun and the size multiplier, since they impact the brightness and harshness of the lighting. To speed up our preview a bit, let's first draw a render region in the VFB to render only that specific area, and then see how we can make the shadows more blurry using the sun's parameters. An easy way to do this is to increase the sun's size multiplier. A value of 15 should work here to soften the shadows a bit. Note that the size multiplier also affects the visible size of the sun itself, as well as its appearance and reflections. Okay, let's disable the sun in the render region and then explore another option for exterior lighting. This time, from the Lights toolbar, let's click on the V-Ray Dome Light option and click anywhere to place it in the project. This will create a sphere or hemispherical dome around the project, with the option to map an image to it, such as an HDRI. By default, the Dome Light in V-Ray comes with a ready-to-use 360-degree HDRI image, which you'll see appears in the background of our render right away. Now, I'm first going to enable the Use Transform option. This will lock the orientation of the HDRI texture to the V-Ray Dome widget so that I can simply rotate the dome light directly from the viewport, and the texture and lighting will rotate with it. Also, note that the Adaptive mode is checked on by default, which enables us to take advantage of the adaptive sampling algorithms in V-Ray Next. These make the dome light's calculations more efficient and can significantly speed up your render times depending on the scenario. Now let's rotate the dome light and observe the result this has on the lighting. You'll see that we're now getting a lot more light in our render simply by rotating the HDRI so that the light shines more directly onto the house in our project. HDRIs are great in this sense because a single HDRI can be used to achieve a bunch of different results, all based on its rotation. However, my render still looks a bit too dark, so I'm going to increase the intensity of the dome light to two by clicking in this little square here. There we go, now the light is filling in the scene much more nicely. Okay, let's try loading in another HDR image this time to see how that changes the lighting. If we go to the texture slot here, we can then click on the folder icon to load in a new image. I'm gonna use the Spruit Sunrise 4K HDR image, which you can download for free from hdrihaven.com or find it in the assets folder of this lesson. Now we'll see the lighting change right away as the dome light adopts the color tone and characteristics of the Spruit Sunrise HDRI we just loaded in. The sky really is the limit in terms of the sheer variety of lighting scenarios you can achieve with HDRIs. And as a bonus, many are available for free online or can be bought at a reasonable price. Now, the image is once again a bit too dark, so let's increase the dome light's intensity to 30. All right. That's looking much better, but I'm still not satisfied with this result, as I think there's now too much shade across the bottom foreground of the image, and not enough variety of shade coming from the trees in the scene. Let's rotate the dome light and HDR again to find a more interesting light angle for our final render. Okay, I'm really enjoying the light from this angle much more, as it also feels very fitting for a late afternoon hour. The shade at this angle also adds more variety in the shadows, and a sense of realistic depth to the image. In addition, 
the warmth and yellow tint coming from the HDRI contrasts very nicely with the clear blue sky above. All right, now let's stop the interactive render, and then in the settings, let's go ahead and prepare for a final production render. I'll turn off the material override, increase the render output to 2000 by 900, and disable interactive rendering and progressive mode so that we're rendering with buckets. When you're ready, we can go ahead and start our final production render. Note that bucket rendering is a very effective method for rendering production images, as it generally renders images at high quality settings more efficiently than progressive rendering, which is preferable for getting a quick preview of your scene. And since the release of V-Ray Next GPU, bucket rendering has been supported on GPU so that you can take advantage of the additional power and speed of GPU rendering. And once more, don't forget to save your final image from the VFB to your hard drive by clicking on the disk icon at the top. Okay, now you've seen a quick walkthrough of how you can set up and tweak the lighting for an exterior scene in V-Ray Next for SketchUp.